morning ladies and gentlemen we are going to talk about an issue which is uh, of least priority if i would say that's how we see it the least attention paid to this issue but certainly a real real uh, big issue in my opinion we come to our offices in the morning we go back we feel some headache some dizziness some cough and we attribute it to work stress can i have water please sir Yeah. And we attribute it to working stress. Uh, you know, bo our boss is bugging us. But uh, actually, in my opinion, it could be the case that the indoor air quality of the building is uh, somewhat affecting the health of the people, the mental state of the people, and the comfort of the people. yeah so if we define indoor air quality it's the quality of air inside the buildings defined by the presence of pollutants the thermal comfort and that could affect the health comfort and performance of the occupants of that premises well we know it's an area of concern it is linked to the health of the occupants well indoor air quality is is more known as a rural problem in india because of biomass burning for cooking but less known for in in urban areas where buildings can also be polluted inside in us uh, you know there are a lot of studies which say that you know uh, well we all know that 88 to 90% of our times we spend indoors and uh, indoor air quality could be equally uh, or or if not equal it could be uh, more than uh, responsible for our health problems uh there are studies which says that indoor air pollutants could be 2 to 5 times higher than outdoors and in india if you see the latest global burden of disease estimates it says that indoor air quality is the second highest killer in india well it's not uh, it's not exclusively saying it's urban or rural but the total uh, uh indoor air quality uh, attributed deaths in india are on the second highest number well let's divide the indoor air quality problems in four parts uh, one is the office buildings the other could be the parking areas which are also sort of indoors uh, i'm talking about the indoor parking areas the public places like restaurants hotels libraries malls and then the rural households for the time being we can just exclude them the sources in office buildings could could be the hvac systems the carpets the paints we put on the walls the polishes put on the furnitures use of pesticide insecticides and the personal care products we all use parking areas we know how many vehicles uh, they cater to public places uh, addition to the office, office uh, related sources they could be smokers we know it's banned in india but still people smoke in public places and in rural households biomass burning is the major contributor well let's talk about the pollutants in office buildings pm vocs co all this can be there in public places nicotine can be an additional pollutant comes out uh, from the smoking exercise well the causal factors for deterioration of indoor air quality could be in inadequate ventilation poorly designed ventilation systems the high temperature and humidity levels the sources which exist inside the buildings the furnitures the paints the hvac systems the most uh, i mean if not most an equal contributor to indoor air quality is the state of air quality outside the buildings and we know wherever you go in india 80% of the <coughs> cities are violating the standards for ambient air quality and that is the air which all our hvac systems suck from outside and put it inside so if the air of uh, outside area is polluted you know the indoors are bound to be polluted until and unless you put systems to control it and then you have products like paints printers could be another source of uh, voc emissions the inks which we use in printers the uh, the problems of ioq starts when oxygen levels start to go down co2 levels starts accumulating bio aerosols and the accumulation of air pollutants this is a picture which shows how in a office the outdoor air can get inside the inside uh, uh, 
the inside uh, sources of pollution. Some plants can also uh, emit VOCs, so that is another source of uh, pollutant uh, excluding to the those I have already spoke about. Now we have done an inventory of non-methane volatile organic carbon emissions in India. It shows, well it is for all the sources, ambient indoor, all sources in India. It shows in 2010, the contribution of paints is about 8 percent. And if you see the per capita paint consumption in India, it is actually not very high. But when we talk about the next 20 years, it is going to grow to about 25 percent. Now we will have to think about it, what kind of paints we really, really want to put. It is not bad actually, you know, we are painting, but what about, what is the quality of paint we want to put? we want to paint our uh, wall with, that is more important. We have done some measurements uh, in different offices, we find that generally PM levels are found to be in control uh, except few cases, but they are at the, at the verge of violation of WHO guidelines beyond which the health impacts start. Let us talk about CO2 levels, we have found in many offices CO2 levels are found to be high generally because of less fresh air intake. And VOCs for which we do not have the standards as such, the levels are found to be uh, high uh, considering the fact that even the trace amount of VOCs can cause a lot of health impacts. Well, this is a list of all the health impacts and uh, uh, considering the pressure from my chair, I would not go in detail of all this, but uh, I can share my slides uh, whoever wants. Then I, I spoke about uh, a syndrome initially that when, when you get out of your office, you, you feel dizzy, you feel headache. Well, that is that is not uh, clinically detectable what is the kind of disease you are having. It is actually a sick building syndrome and uh, you feel like there is something wrong with this building and that could be related to the indoor air quality of that building. In, in US, they have uh, uh, found that in 50 percent of cases inadequate ventilation is the main cause of SPS followed by contamination from outdoor air, followed by microbial contamination and some unknown sources. Well, symptoms of sick building sin syndrome could be or irritation in eye and throat, the headache, dizziness, fatigue, difficulty in concentrations. We all face this problem in our day to day life, itching on skin and difficulty in breathing are other symptoms. Let us talk about uh, temperature, it could, uh, it has you know direct impact, if, if it is too hot you just cannot concentrate. If the relative humidity is too high, you feel sticky and biological uh, contaminants can stick to you. So there are limits uh, provided by ASHRAE as standards that uh, the temperature should be in between 22 to 25 degree Celsius range and RH should be 30 to 65 percent range. Now it is up to us. Can we really maintain it for betterment of health of our uh, occupants? CO2 is another thing. If it goes beyond 1000 ppm, it is going to show the effects on as uh, SPS, uh, as sick building syndrome. Well, we, you know, many countries have some sort of standards in place. In India, uh, Mr. Pandey has already mentioned there are no standards for indoor air quality and uh, we are just following we're not following actually the WHO guidelines are just the guideline value for us and we, we are really pitching for a, a indoor equality standard for our country. Yeah. Let us go to some mitigation options, how really can we manage indoor, indoor equality. The source management, administrative controls and engineering controls are the possible solutions. In source management, we will have to actually change the source itself which are producing uh, indoor air pollutants. Can we shift to low VOC paints? Can we shift to low VOC inks? Uh, can we use different kinds of fuels if, if uh, you know, not all offices could be having LPG in India, they may be using kerosene. Can we shift to them to clean up fuels? The building materials uh, needs to be changed. And then the personal products, I mean there was uh, recent news that uh, personal products also contain lot of harmful material. Can we push the industry to, to go for uh, cleaner and more green products? Administrative controls can be uh, worked upon by reducing the time of a worker who is exposed to higher chemical doses 
and uh, you know it could also uh, be uh, that they could be more more aware about these issues housekeeping is another very important issue if you have uh, all kinds of material spilling all over your office they could lead to a lot of emissions and they, that needs to be controlled the engineering controls would be spoken more about my uh, fellow uh, panelists uh, hvac's control uh, then uh, improving indoor air quality through plants and this is an option which is nowadays in news that uh, <clears throat> while entering you know the air inside your premises that can go through uh, different types of plants which uh, take out the pollutants from the sucked air and that could help uh, in uh, improving air quality well some interventions other than those which i have already spoken about could be that uh, we should have uh, some sort of standards and guidelines for improving in indoor air quality in india we should verify the claims made by the products by through certifications there should be evaluation of uh, all different buildings well we can control uh, indoor air quality only when we can measure it so it's important to measure indoor air quality in different buildings and i will pitch for you know inclusion of griha rating which includes indoor air quality as a parameter in 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 big building projects and certainly uh, i think this is most important until and unless we improve our outdoor air quality the indoor air quality is going to remain as a problem in india and uh, we should certainly look to improve uh, the outdoor air quality thank you